we are the only intelligent life in the known universe. Imagine that we're the only place where there is intelligence in this galaxy. It is now an issue of when, not if, intelligent alien life will make contact with us. The universe has always beckoned with its mysteries. On a crisp, unassuming night, the James Webb Space Telescope pierced through the void of space, revealing a discovery that will forever alter our understanding of the universe. Huddled around screens and monitors, astronomers collectively gasped as data flowed in, revealing something they could never have imagined. City lights on K218b, a far-off exoplanet orbiting the constellation Leo that is 120 light years away. The images were unmistakable. Pinpoints of light shimmering against the planet's twilight zone resembled the luminous sprawl of earthly cities as seen from space. The ramifications are astounding. Is this proof of an advanced alien civilization? Could this be the first concrete evidence of intelligence from space? Join us as we explore how the Webb Telescope detected city lights on K218b, 120 light years away. A multinational team has recently discovered carbon dioxide and methane on the exoplanet K218b using the James Webb Space Telescope. At 120 light years away, this planet is completely different from all the others in our solar system. Although it's smaller than Neptune, its mass is higher than Earth's. Though many exoplanets are extreme, violent, or at least alien in nature, whether they're blasted by intense radiation from their stars, lack a solid surface, or are frozen relics at the edge of their systems, K218b was an enticing target in the search for life due to its similarities to our planet. K218b is between two and three times the width of Earth with 8.6 times the mass of our planet. K218b has 8.6 times Earth's mass and is two to three times as wide. Its location is ideal for supporting liquid water as it is within the habitable zone of its star. This leads scientists to believe that the exoplanet is a Hycean world, meaning that it is filled with liquid water, an essential component for all known forms of life. It appears that hydrogen, not nitrogen, is the primary atmospheric component of this exoplanet in contrast to Earth. Solar radiation reaching this planet is nearly identical to that reaching Earth. K218b is a perfect place to locate life, since when the atmosphere isn't a factor, its temperature is close to Earth's. Characterizing the atmospheres of Hycean planets is not too difficult, but even when we combine data from the Hubble telescope and other ground-based observatories with the infrared James Webb telescope, which is located one million miles away from Earth, we still don't know for sure if these exoplanets are habitable. Although it is intriguing to try to understand the cosmos, no one ever said it would be simple. The observation of a dearth of ammonia and an abundance of carbon dioxide and methane in K218b lend credence to the idea that it could harbor a watery ocean beneath a hydrogen-rich atmosphere. Additional data is currently being used to clarify these discoveries which include mention of a potential signal from a chemical known as dimethyl sulfide, or DMS. The signal would have to be confirmed, but on Earth, this molecule is only produced by marine phytoplankton. Scientists urge caution before discussing signs of life. The single carbon atom contains the blueprint for all life on Earth, from its inception to its present day evolution. One may say that this chemical component is the building block of all living things. On top of that, our reliance on fossil fuels is changing the way the world's climate cycles, which carbon controls. Plus, it's a key ingredient in the materials that are becoming more and more integral to our technological lives. The habitable zone is a common topic of discussion in astrophysics when discussing the finding of new exoplanets. Our criteria for identifying this area are based on a single criterion, the existence of liquid water on Earth's surface. This straightforward metric which is proportional to the star's distance, allows us to assess the likelihood of alien life. This is due to an intricate but illuminating finding. Liquid water is essential for life on Earth, and no other planet has been found to contain it. Those with a deeper understanding of astrobiology can always counter that this description is oversimplified and fails to adequately describe a habitable zone. That is correct. 
However, as we move away from the Earth, we lose information. There must be a simplification of the criteria used to establish the likelihood of life. Naturally, with the aid of modern telescopes like the James Webb, we are able to do more than just fine-tune the models. We are also able to take measurements that were previously considered unattainable. Surface temperature, a key physical variable in the field we term climate, is regulated by a web of interrelated variables, including solar insulation, albedo, and greenhouse gas concentrations. Travelers from colder climes often learn about solar insulation, the quantity of energy that the Earth receives from the sun during their beach vacations in sunny nations. Both the star's brightness, the amount of radiation it emits per second over all wavelengths, and the planet's distance from it play crucial roles in this. The total solar radiation that a planet reflects back into space is known as its albedo. Aerosols, a collection of microscopic particles, some solid and some liquid, suspended in a gas, clouds, ice sheets, vegetation, and the relative amounts of land and water on Earth all have an obvious impact on albedo, not to mention that various timescales cause all of this to change. That is why climate models are so intricate. The part of the sun's energy that isn't directly reflected by the albedo and returned to space is absorbed by the Earth's surface and radiated again in the form of infrared energy. And this is where greenhouse gases come into play. They absorb infrared radiation with the overall effect of warming the atmosphere. Thus, if greenhouse gases fall below a certain limit, liquid water could freeze throughout the planet. These gases aren't bad in moderation. However, as Venus surely experienced, the vast majority of water evaporates after that point is crossed. Over the vast majority of Earth's recorded geological history, carbon dioxide has served as the primary greenhouse gas. Measurements conducted experimentally have proven that its concentration is controlled by an internal thermostat, which has maintained a temperate climate for over a billion years. Furthermore, it is clearly shown that all of this is going to change on Earth in the near future as a result of humans injecting this gas into the air, primarily from burning fossil fuels. We are aware that it is an oversimplification in astrophysics to claim a planet is habitable before we have data on its atmospheric composition. Consequently, the discovery of the chemicals that control atmospheric chemistry, water, carbon dioxide, methane, and ozone, is the primary goal of all planetary characterization missions. This is why it's crucial to get a complete picture of the star's energy output across the spectrum, not only in the visible light. And that's why we're afraid of losing the Hubble telescope, because at the moment, it's the only working instrument that allows us to measure the energy of stars in the ultraviolet range. While likely to disappoint all of us eager for the confirmation of extraterrestrial life, however, it doesn't mean that JWST won't find traces of life in the atmosphere of an extrasolar planet or exoplanet in the future. There must be some type of life on K218b if the amount of DMs is building up to measurable levels, at a rate 20 times higher than Earth's. Despite this, Niku Madhusudan, a scientist from the University of Cambridge and the head of the inquiry team, cautioned against jumping to conclusions about the presence of DMs due to the lack of evidence. He did say that confirmation of its presence in K218b's atmosphere would require further Jussitem observations, but apparently not everyone got the message. The DMS discovery was inconclusive, which is why the UCR researchers decided to investigate more. The DM signal from the JWST was not very strong and only showed up in certain ways when analyzing the data, Tsai said. We wanted to know if we could be sure of what seemed like a hint about DMs. What this second team found with computer models accounting for hydrogen-based atmospheres and the physics and chemistry of DMs was the original data was unlikely to point to the detection of DMs. The signal strongly overlaps with methane, and we think that picking out DMs from methane is beyond this instrument's capability. That implies the JWST will have to switch up its imaging tools from the near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph, NIRISS, and the near-infrared spectrograph, NIRSpec, that were utilized for the first probe that found signs of DMs. Luckily, astronomers are still collecting data about K218b's environment, thanks to Madhusudan's team's continued observations with the JWST's MIRI mid-infrared sensor, 
the spacecraft's other main sensor. The most prevalent biosignatures on Earth might not be the optimal ones to look for on an extraterrestrial. Unlike Earth, which produces oxygen from plants and microorganisms, a planet with a hydrogen-rich atmosphere may have DMs instead. Does this small letdown constitute a setback for the scientists scouring the universe for indications of life? Absolutely not, and it certainly doesn't diminish the significance of the first study as a step toward comprehending Hycean worlds, which were among the most intriguing search targets. In a rhetorical question, Tsai asked, why do we keep exploring the cosmos for signs of life? Imagine you're camping in Joshua Tree at night and you hear something. Your instinct is to shine a light to see what's out there. That's what we're doing too, in a way. At the same time, a cluster of potentially very old galaxies has been spotted by astronomers employing the James Webb Space Telescope. This cluster could represent the oldest cosmic web ever identified. On a clear night, it might look like the stars above are distributed more or less evenly. But that isn't the case. All stars are part of a gigantic cosmic web that links galaxies across the universe like threads of spider silk, leaving unfathomably large swaths of nothingness in between. Presently, scientists present proof that this enormous galactic highway extends almost to the beginning of the cosmos, a gassy tendril of 10 densely packed galaxies spanning 3 million light years has been found by scientists using data from the James Webb Space Telescope. Scientists believe this long extinct gas and star filament might be the first known strand in the universe's intricate web. I was surprised by how long and how narrow this filament is, Zhao Hui Fan, an astronomer at the University of Arizona and a member of the research team, said in a statement. I expected to find something, but I didn't expect such a long, distinctly thin structure. This newly found filament came into existence just 830 million years after the Big Bang, when the cosmos was quite young. An incredibly brilliant astronomical body called a quasar, which contains a supermassive black hole, serves as its anchor. The initial discovery of the tendril was made by scientists due to this luminous black hole. The Aspire project, in which Fan and his colleagues are participating, seeks to investigate the role of early black holes in shaping the evolution of the galaxy. This quasar was one of 25 early universe quasars targeted by the research. This is among the first filamentary formations ever discovered linked to a faraway quasar. Scientists believe that black holes had a role in the formation of the cosmic web through their gravity wells, which drew matter together, and on rare occasions, through their ability to launch it into space on cosmic winds which whirl up around incredibly active quasars. Even though the winds are pulling these star and dust strands apart, gravity is keeping them bound together. Scientists predict that the filament will eventually shrink into a galaxy cluster like the Coma Cluster, which is around 330 million light years away from Earth. Even more importantly, Webb has expanded upon the findings made by NASA's infrared Spitzer Space Telescope in one of its most recent discoveries. The Spitzer spacecraft found seven planets in 2016 orbiting a single star, officially known as TRAPPIST-1. The star was found 24 years ago at a distance of around 40.7 light years from Earth. One of the discovered planets is now the subject of an investigation by scientists using Webb. Known as TRAPPIST-1b, the planet has a similar makeup to Earth and is about the same size, and the research has been groundbreaking with it being the first time any light has been detected as being emitted from another planet outside of our solar system. This finding is a major step toward answering the question of whether or not planets around tiny energetic stars like TRAPPIST-1 can maintain habitable atmospheres. This is encouraging news for Webb's miry characterization of temperate exoplanets of Earth's size. These observations make excellent use of the mid-infrared spectrum that Webb has to offer. Up until now, no telescope has been sensitive enough to detect such faint mid-infrared light. Sadly though, it's missing one massive thing when it comes to supporting life. There's no atmosphere. Scientists found this out by measuring both sides of the planet, with one side in permanent darkness and the other facing its star at all times. It's also a bit warm at around 449.6 degrees Fahrenheit, so about as hot as your oven on a high setting not an ideal temperature for living in, we'd say. Additionally, TRAPPIST-1b receives almost four times as much solar radiation as Earth does. 
These stars are 10 times more common in our galaxy than sun-like stars, and they are twice as likely to host rocky planets. However, they are also extremely active, shining brightly when young and emitting X-rays and flares powerful enough to destroy an entire atmosphere. The most important thing is that Webb can keep studying planets in this fashion in the hopes of discovering another planet that could potentially host life similar to Earth. After a global catastrophe wipes out most human civilizations, maybe a small group of chosen individuals will be able to relocate there to start over. Furthermore, NASA has finally cracked it when it comes to explaining how a marshmallow planet got so big despite being extremely light compared to its size. The groundbreaking James Webb Space Telescope has solved the mystery of how it grew so massive while remaining remarkably lightweight and floofy according to the American agency. The huge planet, which has been given the designation WASP-107b, is located around 200 light years from Earth. It was first discovered back in 2017 by the Hubble Space Telescope. The planet itself is massive, some three quarters the size of Jupiter, yet it holds less than 10% of the planet's mass, meaning it's somewhat of a balloon in comparison floating through the cosmos. The majority of planets are larger, hotter, and easier to explain, yet puffy planets do occur. Therefore, for the last seven years, experts have been scratching their heads over the mystery of how it grew while remaining remarkably light. We inferred that WASP-107b had a massive helium and hydrogen shell around a tiny rocky core from its age, mass, radius, and predicted internal temperature. It remained puzzling, though, how a planet with such a tiny core could absorb so much gas without expanding into a Jupiter-sized planet. David Singh from the Johns Hopkins University, JHU, lead author on a parallel study also published in Nature, said, WASP-107b is such an interesting target for Webb because it's significantly cooler and more Neptune-like in mass than many of the other low-density planets, the hot Jupiters, we've been studying. As a result, we should be able to detect methane, and other molecules that can give us information about its chemistry and internal dynamics that we can't get from a hotter planet. Because of its large radius, prolonged atmosphere, and edge on orbit, WASP-107b is a perfect candidate for transmission, spectroscopy, a technique that uses the planetary atmosphere's effects on starlight to determine the composition of the gas. We can now detect and quantify the abundance of a plethora of chemicals on our planet thanks to the precision of the data from both studies. This includes water vapor, methane, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, and ammonia. Methane levels in the planet's atmosphere were extremely low, at just a thousandth of what would be predicted given its assumed temperature. We now know that the planet's core is at least twice as large as previously believed, thanks to researchers' ability to estimate its size. What does this mean to the average individual? Altogether, WASP-107b is not as mysterious as it once appeared. We don't need a strange formation scenario with a very tiny core and a massive gaseous envelope for planets like WASP-107b, according to the web data. Alternatively, we may use a material that is similar to Neptune in composition, heavy rock with relatively little gas, increase its temperature, and then puff it up to mimic its appearance. On the other hand, the James Webb Space Telescope has detected signs of an atmosphere on a super-Earth planet made entirely out of diamonds. Experts from the American Space Agency's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, in Pasadena, California, have been using the $10 billion piece of space equipment to expand our knowledge of the universe. Occasionally, this has involved shedding light on monstrous, supermassive black holes revealing interesting details about them en route. It has also been utilized by astronomers to direct the JWST's observations toward planets with weather systems hot enough to melt iron. Naturally, the search for evidence of extraterrestrial life is one in which our collective interest is at an all-time high. Super-Earth planets located around 41 light-years from Earth are the focus of the most current finding. The planet was initially found in 2004, and since then, scientists have speculated that diamond makes up most of its composition. However, after 20 years, the JWST has found surface indications of a possible atmosphere. 
Claimed by NASA to be the best evidence to date for the existence of any rocky planet's atmosphere outside our solar system, the newfound object is 55 Cancri E. And it sounds like something out of a science fiction book. And it's made of diamonds too. A real phrase used by astronomers to classify planets nevertheless. And the logic is pretty straightforward. With a diameter nearly twice that of Earth and density slightly greater, the planet is classified as a super-Earth, NASA says. Larger than Earth, smaller than Neptune, and likely similar in composition to the rocky planets in our solar system. In the case of 55 Cancri A, calling it rocky is somewhat misleading, given its surface is most likely to be bubbling away with oceans of molten lava. What's this about an atmosphere then? Since its discovery almost 20 years ago, NASA has been unable to resolve the question of whether 55 Cancri E has an atmosphere or even if it could have one given its extreme heat and radiation levels. Previous studies have suggested that it may have a nitrogen-rich, oxygen-rich, carbon dioxide-rich atmosphere. But scientists have had to be open to the possibility that it could be completely devoid of any atmosphere at all. Now, with the help of JWST's near-infrared camera and MIRI, NASA has discovered that the planet is cooler than predicted, which is indicative of the presence of an atmosphere, whether it be carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide. I've worked on this planet for more than a decade, said Diana Dragomir, an exoplanet researcher at the University of New Mexico and co-author of the study. It's been really frustrating that none of the observations we've been getting have robustly solved these mysteries. I am thrilled that we're finally getting some answers. So is it habitable? Because of the extreme heat and radiation on 55 Cancri E, the main atmosphere has likely evaporated, leaving behind only a secondary layer of the atmosphere. There are oceans formed of magma, therefore it's also rather unstable on top. Due to the extreme heat and radiation from the star, the main atmosphere would have long since evaporated. The magma ocean is constantly restocking the secondary atmosphere. Magma contains dissolved gas in addition to crystals and liquid rock. The question of whether or not the planet is habitable is not important at this point, according to NASA. For planetary scientists, it opens a new door to investigating how rocky planets' atmospheres, surfaces, and innards interact with one another. Additionally, they believe it may provide new information on the primordial environments of Mars, Venus, and Earth, all of which were formerly believed to have been submerged in oceans of magma. The ultimate goal is to figure out how stony planets may have gas-rich atmospheres, which are necessary for habitability. Well, the James Webb Telescope has made yet another discovery. Studies by the University of Michigan, University of Arizona, and University of Victoria have looked at images captured by Webb, which scientists now think shows the formation of a brand new planet. The super finding was made possible by merging information from several space telescopes including Webb's infrared sensors, Hubble, and ALMA. What was the result? Discovering a newly formed planet? Keep in mind that it is not an easy process. Protoplanetary disks are the initial stages of the process that gather gas and dust around a newborn star before they develop into planets in their conventional sense. Then, after what seems like an eternity, the matter is transformed into planets. The beginnings of our solar system and all others throughout the universe can be better understood with knowledge of its lifespan. Webb discovered the planet in its early stages of formation around HL Tari, a young star that resembles our sun. It's located in the Taurus star forming area, which is 457 light years away from Earth, so keep that in mind. Moreover, scientists were surprised to see results that differed from their expectations. Gas giant planets like Jupiter in our solar system were originally expected. These worlds are primarily made of hydrogen and helium. According to multiple models, the planet ought to be located inside the disk, and it ought to be huge, hot, and luminous. However, it eluded our search. This could indicate that Earth is significantly cooler than previously thought, or that it is covered by an object that keeps us from viewing it. Although we have discovered a new planet candidate, we are still unsure if this one is real, or just a background star or galaxy muddying our picture. The precise nature of what we are seeing will be clarified by further observations. The scientists published their findings after resolving long-lost mysteries about the interplay between protoplanetary disk gas and dust envelopes and the disks that actually form the planets. 
Now it's up to us to let Webb keep digging into planet formation in the hopes that it may shed light on Earth's origins. In addition to providing a new perspective on the universe, the James Webb Space Telescope has ushered in a monumental era in human history. The twinkling lights of K2, 18b extend an invitation to explore the cosmos with them, to find out what is beyond the veil of stars over our heads. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.